Mercedes drop bombshell on Lewis Hamilton after leaked documents. So we're going to be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video. And if you want more Mercedes news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red button down below. The first story is Mercedes documents leaked on who will replace Lewis Hamilton for Mercedes in 2025. The first is Carlos Sainz. Bizarrely enough, a direct swap could be on the cards. Out of the two drivers, many would argue that Hamilton is the better driver. However, by signing Sainz, Mercedes would be getting a top driver with plenty of years ahead of him. Notably, Sainz was the only non-Red Bull driver to win a race in 2023 and has finished P1 again this season. He is no stranger to driving for big teams either, spending two seasons with McLaren before his Ferrari switch. The second option is Alex Albon. Albon was arguably promoted to a Red Bull seat too quickly in 2019 before being dropped to a reserve role less than two seasons later. However, since being picked up by Williams in 2022, the 27-year-old has performed at a high level. Albon has comfortably outperformed his two most recent teammates, Nicholas Latifi and Logan Sargent Mace, and could be ready for the next step. He is signed with Williams until the end of 2025, but team principal James Vowles worked with Mercedes for over a decade, so that may make a move easier. The third option is Kimi Antonelli. Replacing a seven-time world champion with a teenager would be bold, but F1 may be due for a shakeup. Antonelli, a Mercedes junior, is making his F2 debut with Prima this season after skipping F3 and appears destined for the very top. The Silver Arrows reportedly rate the 17-year-old very highly. Sky Sports Ted Kravitz believes Mercedes view the Italian as the next Max Verstappen or Charles Leclerc. If he shows promise in an F2 field, Mercedes could have an interesting decision on their hands. It'd be a risk, but a very exciting move nonetheless. The fourth is Frederick Vesti. Vesti is another option for Mercedes if they are looking to bring in a young gun. The 22-year-old is considerably more experienced than Antonelli, having spent two seasons in F2 and F3, respectively. Despite not winning any of those campaigns, he has been given the role of Mercedes reserve driver for 2024. Notably, he drove in two practice sessions for the team last year and impressed on track. There are a lot of honorable mentions. Esteban Ocon has never finished higher than eighth in the Drivers' Championship, but could better machinery see him realize his potential. He is fairly consistent too, and would be a low risk option for Mercedes. His current Alpine teammate, Pierre Gasly, also has a chance. If Daniel Ricciardo is able to return to his best, he could be a consideration, while a return to former Mercedes driver Valtteri Bottas is also not off the cards. Both would bring experience and a cool head. Mick Schumacher was dropped by Haas after a challenging 2022 rookie season. He is currently a Mercedes reserve driver, and his famous father, Michael, even drove for the Silver Arrows. A promotion to full-time driver may be unlikely, though. Why Ferrari wanted Hamilton is clear. The iconic racing brand has been looking for a driver to match its illustrious pedigree for some time and has struggled, relatively speaking, in recent years on the track. Ferrari has not had a driver world champion since Kimi Raikkonen won in 2007. Chairman John Elkan wanted to land a big name and has reportedly long been a fan of Hamilton per ESPN. With Ferrari's number two driver Carlos Sainz in contract discussions, that created an opening for Hamilton at Ferrari. It's not entirely clear what prompted Hamilton's exit from Mercedes. He and Mercedes have endured back-to-back -back disappointing seasons, with his most recent win coming in late 2021. Despite that, Hamilton still signed an extension with Mercedes, inking a two-year deal on August 31st, 2023. Hamilton has been connected with Ferrari at points throughout his career, including during his 2023 contract negotiations with Mercedes. But Mercedes boss Toto Wolff was confident that while Hamilton and Ferrari met, his man would remain with Mercedes. 
The allure of racing for the iconic brand of Ferrari, coupled with long-term concerns over winning at Mercedes, may have resulted in Hamilton changing teams. Though Ferrari, like other racing teams, has struggled to keep up with Red Bull, the chance to win with an iconic brand could further build on the historic legacy Hamilton has already cultivated within the sport. The second story is George Russell left feeling pretty rubbish while Lewis Hamilton can't hide his delight after Miami Grand Prix. Just two places separated them, but Lewis Hamilton was a lot happier with his Miami Grand Prix result than teammate George Russell. In previous years, sixth place would hardly be cause for celebration from the seven-time Formula One champion. But it is his best Grand Prix result of a difficult season to date, and he felt much more comfortable in his Mercedes than has been the case in recent weeks. After a close fight with Nico Hülkenberg in the opening stages and an ultimately unsuccessful chase of Sergio Perez later on, Hamilton was pleased with his afternoon's work. He said, So much fun. I've really enjoyed this weekend race-wise. It's been a lot of fun on track. Really great, tough, close battles. I mean, going out to turn 11 up against the wall, wheels locked. I was like, oh, geez, this could be either a big crash into this corner or I'm going by. So I love that I had that in zero fear in that moment. So I'm super grateful for that. Then to be able to hold on to a Red Bull was really quite cool. Great job by my team. He was also beaming about Lando Norris's victory and expressed his pride in both his fellow Britain and his old McLaren team for their success. Norris became the 21st British drive to win a world championship F1 race by beating Max Verstappen to the checkered flag in Florida. Number 20 on the list is Russell, whose first and so far only victory came in Brazil in 2022. He's deserving of a race victory probably many, many years ago. Russell said of his friend Norris. And I think, for all the drivers in Formula One in this era of dominance from one team and one driver, it's always great to see somebody get that chance to score a victory. But while he was happy for Norris, Russell didn't have much positive to say about his own result after finishing eighth. He said glumly, it was a pretty rubbish race from start to finish in all honesty. I had a good start, but when Checo sent it down the inside, when he rejoined, everybody had to check up a bit, and it cost me three positions. Then I just had no pace at all there on in, so I need to check the car, check the data, because something didn't feel quite right. It's definitely felt like a more difficult weekend than all of the others, but the results have all really been relatively similar. We are between P5 on a good day and P8 on a bad day. And today was a bad day. We finished P8. Lewis had a good day, drove really well, and finished P6. It's kind of where we are. The third story is Mercedes shuts down early Antonelli F1 move. It is not going to happen. Antonelli is being evaluated by Mercedes as an option to replace Ferrari-bound Lewis Hamilton for 2025 dovetailing a Formula 2 campaign at Prima with private testing in the Brackley team's previous F1 cars. But in recent days, the 17-year-old Mercedes protege has also been mentioned as an option to replace Williams' Logan Sargent this year if the Grove-based squad decides it wants to switch drivers. That idea ramped up on Friday after it emerged that the FIA had received a request for dispensation, understood to be from Williams, to grant the Italian youngster the required super license to compete in F1 before he reaches the minimum age of 18. Antonelli does not turn 18 until the end of August, fueling speculation that he was being prepared for an F1 debut before the summer break. But speaking to Autosport, Wolf has completely ruled out that idea, saying there is no interest from Mercedes in changing its original plans for the youngster. The dispensation was something that wasn't brought up by us, and we have certainly stated from the beginning that that was not something we have pursued, Wolf said. I don't know where this belief comes from that Mercedes was keen on pushing that forward. Kimi needs to concentrate on his F2 campaign, and he knows that. Everything else is just rumors which continue to spin around and that are factually incorrect. He's an F2 driver for Prema, that is what he's doing, and this is what we're all concentrating on. 
Wolf stressed that Mercedes would remain careful not to burn Antonelli by promoting him too early, given his rapid rise through the junior series and his lack of experience. Just 15 months ago, he was in an F4 car, he said. We have great belief in Kimi, his abilities, and also his future. But there's a trajectory which we need to follow with diligence, rather than trying to dream about jumping from series to series in a way that is certainly not beneficial for him. I think a champion is not going to be distracted by any of this. But certainly, at least it distracts me because everybody's asking me, what about Kimi and driving in Imola? This is not going to happen. This is not something that Mercedes wants. These rumors have gotten their own spin. Let's do Formula 2. We as a team have lots of other issues to resolve.